Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing some sawmilling, but it's not for us. It's actually a paid customer. Uh, they reached out to us via email. I think they're a subscriber to the channel. They've got two logs they want us to mill up and uh, we'll show you what we're getting after when they get here. All right, so this is Josh, and these are the two logs that he brought us here. Josh, what are these, and what are you hoping to get out of them? These are uh, hemlock that fell from uh, that last winter storm where everybody lost trees. Yep. I lost the top of it uh, up in uh, Girard, Pennsylvania, and cut it out. Um, my father and I built a house in the 90s, and all of the uh, structure is built out of hemlock beams. Rough sawn. Rough sawn. Um, it was actually sawn on a circular mill back in 89 and was actually the place that I had my first job. I off bared all the slab wood on this mill. Wow. So, so I'm, we're adding a, uh, a loft inside the house and we're going to lag bolt these to existing beams and it'll create a, a cantilever loft. So it'll be self-supporting just off of the weight of the back of the beam. Okay. So we'll have eight foot off the back of it, four foot overhang, just a small loft for like a, a small sitting area. Now these logs, you cut them at 12.6 12 and they're, you sent me the dimensions. I think the one end was how big? Uh, it's probably about 20, the tree was 28 at the base. Yeah. It took every bit of a, a still 362 to cut through the bottom of it. Yep. Um, with a, a 25 inch bar but i think at the base where it starts to flare out it's about 24 and then it tapers down to probably about 14 inches and you said you want to get at least two eight inch by five inch beams out of these Correct. and then we'll get whatever else we can get out of them yep. but you said you shopped around your father-in-law owns a pallet mill and nobody will bring in just two logs and custom mill them for you it's hard to find custom milling um only because most of the mills that are out here are just making dimensional lumber for pallet shops or they're selling it off to i don't even know they're selling the cans or selling the boards to bigger to, mills to bigger or mills and to bigger factories yeah and for just a guy that wants some lumber you can't get roughs on lumber at home depot yep you know it's going to be pine and it's going to turn into a corkscrew in about three days <laughs> yeah so. all right well let's get these uh unstrapped unloaded on the mill and start getting them milled up for you
Is that how you found the channel? Yep. Looking for a 35 horse tractor? Looking for a 30, you know, a mid-sized tractor. Yeah. And then it's, you know, all right, Coyote makes one and Bobcat makes one. And yep. I looked Kubota. at, you know, Kubota, TYM. And, and basically everybody that does this kind of stuff has a different machine. Yeah. You know, Adam's got Coyotes. I've got Kubota. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Morgan has, uh, you Kubota. know, about Kubota. Yeah. And then, you know, tr uh, Tractor Time with Tim shows up. John Deere. John Deere's yeah. and, uh, God, I can't think of all the other ones yeah. now. Yeah. There's guys down in, you know, Louisiana that are, oh, I run nothing but TYM. So, yeah. okay, well, what's that one do? <laughs> and you find I was, out. I was going to ask you how you found him, but I, I see now. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a long story to get to a certain point. Yeah. But uh, as you start to really dig into this, they're all the same. Yeah. It's a, it's a Ford Chevy Dodge conversation. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is where I always take a minute and think about how, what's the best way to utilize what's left. If we take this eight off, I can always just mill that in half into a six, five and a half incher. Let's just, do that. Just split it. Yeah. Yeah. One done. I'll put it as a kiln at 12.6, and if it decides it wants to split on the end, I'll cut three off of each end. Yep.
we got all loaded up. We got our four beams that are five by eight. And then we had a couple extras that are five by three or so. And uh, you don't know what you'll use them yet for, but something. Something at some point. Yeah. Um, but that went actually really quick. Uh, milling big beams is really enjoyable because one, they're cool. And especially knowing what you're going to use them for. And two, they don't take a lot of time because, you know, when you're milling one by material, that's, if we would have done that, that would have been another, you know, probably four cuts on each of those, another 24 passes on the mill to get right. those into one by material. So I really enjoy milling beams. I think we had a total of about two hours in getting these milled up. And uh, a lot of that was BSing and camera yeah. work. <laughs> so, but yeah, we were just talking about this deck over trailer. Um, so you were saying this is a 16 foot deck over with a four foot dovetail on the back? Correct. It's rated at uh, it's rated at 10k or 9990. Um, I've got about 7,000 pounds worth of payload that I can stick on it minus the weight of the trailer. But uh, I, I'd say the benefit of the deck over is obviously side loading and being able to get stuff like this into a trailer or onto a trailer as opposed to you know the dump trailer which you have. Yeah. Trying to stick things in it. And you yeah. mentioned you thought about something like this for IBC totes. Yeah, if, if I wanna take IBC totes to a kiln to get them kiln dried, you know, I can get a lot more on here. If you've got a car hauler or an equipment trailer that has the fender wells there, you can only load on the side in the front and then you gotta load from the rear in the back and you really can't get weight over the axles. Um, so I think if and when I do get uh, a trailer for hauling the tractor or anything like that, I would want a deck over trailer. I know on my 7x14 dump trailer, there's just barely enough room for the tractor and I usually have to prop the loader up on the, the headboard of the trailer. Yeah. And I, if I have any kind of attachment on the back, I can't hardly close the, the back doors. Right. Um, so, you know, being a part of, this is my full-time gig now, you know, I'm sawmilling lumber for people. If I want to start going and doing uh, some small odd jobs for people with the tractor, I'm gonna need a trailer at some point, and this is probably what I would get is something very similar to this. My, I've got a Bobcat 2040, which is the same frame size as your CK 3510. Yep. Um, I can fit it with my grapple and a six foot rotary cutter, and the tail wheel just barely hangs off the back. So everything's able to be set on there. It balances out really nicely with the weight uh, being on the rear of the tractor. So yeah, you could go brush hog for people or do something like that. Yep. But all right, well, we're gonna let him get on the road here and take these home and put them in his house. I think that'll be really cool. You'll have to send us pictures of what it turns out when it's done. I will. All right, well, hey, thanks. You're very welcome, thank you. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on this custom milling job. For those of you interested, I charged him for an hour and 20 minutes at $75 an hour, which worked out to be about 100 bucks. And wouldn't you know it, he paid me 150, gave me a $50 tip, so that's always much appreciated. But this is, I guess, what I'm doing now. We're making firewood, custom milling jobs for people. Like I said, we can take the tractor and do some work for people. And uh, tell you what, being self-employed is awfully nice. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.